All right, welcome back to Fuck and Socks, the podcast, episode 101. Today on the show, crazy cat ladies reach a whole new level in this week's Cringe of the Week. Then, Logan Paul is about to marry a hua. We'll tell young men how to avoid situations like that. Then, the West continues to fall. This time, an old Asian woman gets KO'd, and you won't believe what happens next. Hint, there are more criminals than good Samaritans riding the bus. And then after that, we will show you what adult kindergarten is and why you should avoid it. All this and more is Fluckus Talks, the podcast, episode 101, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. And sometimes it's the wrong thing to do. Very cool. 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 Very Fuck the Stocks podcast featuring Richard Rapp. All right, one for one on the intro. As always, guys, this week's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Allegiance Gold. It is no secret that the stability of governments and markets have a significant impact on your financial well being. Poor government decisions such as excessive spending, high debt levels, and inconsistent regulations can lead to economic instability. And when this happens, it can trigger a chain reaction that disrupts financial markets, causing stock prices to plummet, currencies to devalue, and investors to lose confidence. So why should you be worried about our government, the digital dollar, and a looming recession? Because they can jeopardize your financial securities, your retirement savings, your investments, and even the value of the money in your pocket could be at risk. This is particularly concerning for those who rely on investments and their pensions for their financial security in the future. The only company that I recommend to protect your money and your financial security in the future is Allegiance Gold. They have the highest consumer trust rating in the industry and they can help you protect your IRA and 401k with physical gold and silver. With Allegiance Gold, you will have peace in mind knowing your savings are protected, safe, and insured against economic uncertainty. Get up to $5,000 in free silver on a qualifying investment when you visit protectwithfleckus.com today. That's protectwithfleckus.com. Go there today. You could also call 844-4-FLECKA. We weren't able to get the S on. That's 844-435-3222. Now let's get into housekeeping. All right, housekeeping. Thank you to Allegiance Gold. It's always good to have physical gold, Richard. It is. Especially with what's coming. Yeah. Uh, Darkness. <laughs> soon we'll be trading with that, and only that, because the dollar will be used for kindling for fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> some Venezuelan shit. <laughs> Not impossible. All right, we have some updates out of Hawaii. Obviously, Hawaii uh, got, got banged up last week, um, yeah. and there's still some unsettled stuff happening there. Uh, here's an interview with the mayor. Basically, people are asking where are all the missing kids and how many kids are missing. Yeah, it's like numbers are finally getting out, right? Yeah. There's basically a thousand people missing with a certain percentage being kids. I don't know. I wish yes, I you actually. do. How many children are missing? I you know. I wish I knew the answer to that. I would be happy to answer that. You have no estimate right. as to how so, many children are missing? I guess Nothing? we can end this right now if you guys want. Sorry. This always, is one of the stays, biggest questions that the stays, people of Lahaina have, but you don't want to answer. It always takes one or two please. to ruin it for everybody. Please, this is our, our first time. Right right well, we can say that right. about you. You've okay. ruined it for everybody. You're welcome to say it. You're the media. You can say whatever you want. You're a disaster. It always takes one or two to ruin it for everybody. It's like the most important question. <laughs> yeah. How getting many kids com- are missing? Getting combative for reporters asking like the single important question. Yeah, I don't know what he what kind of questions he was hoping for instead. Uh, so, what are you doing next week? Plan, yeah. You know, plans? how's the diversity on the island? Yeah, is the water being equitably distributed? Yeah, exactly. Cernovich made some great points about this. He said that they would have impeached Trump over this. Of course, one hundred percent. And remember when uh, Time Magazine's cover was that girl who was separated from her mom at the border? Oh yeah, and everyone freaked out about that. It's like, well, there's hundreds of kids missing. In Hawaii, right now, American citizens, no one really wants to talk about that. Toodles. Yeah, exactly. And then there was an email that Trump sent out to his supporters. It said, another disgrace I have to tell you about. That's the subject line, which I kind of like. Yeah, he clickbaited. Another disgrace I have to tell you about. Yeah, which is a great (laughs) subject line. (laughs) One more. Like, sends another email. (laughs) One more disgrace. Another disgrace I need to tell you about. Um, So the first disgrace, I guess we can do Joe Biden. 
Joe Biden is the first disgrace this week we're going to cover. Uh, he did a speech the other day where he said America first is actually making America weaker. His America first policy walking away from the rest of the world has made us weaker, not stronger. Yeah. Take your word for it, Joe. Yeah, I do not like the Biden bot. Yeah, I like the original Biden better. Before he got switched, old school Biden. He had he had some racial awareness at his heart. Yeah, he was he, friends he, with the segregationists. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at how mean he was. Look at those eyes back in the day. He was square and blocky. Yeah, exactly. He was sharp. He was yeah. pointed, and now he's soft. And he's you know, America first is bad for America. Sure. Yep. And he changed his signature too. The new Biden bot signature looks a little different. Tough. Um, and then look at, so America first makes us weaker, I guess. Let's see what the foreigners are saying about it. Here's a guy who came from uh, Nicaragua. And let's see what his views on Biden are. Who's after the Nicaragua key? Frontera. Frontera, Mexico? Yes. Desde que usted llegó aquí, los Estados Unidos, ¿cómo te han tratado? Es la verdad, pues, ya he estado bien. ¿Usted qué opina sobre el presidente Joe Biden y si él te hace sentir como bienvenido aquí en Estados Unidos? Súper, sí, claro, sí, John Biden, claro que sí. Muy bien, está muy Joe bien. Biden, el apoyo good. que tiene Joe Biden te dio como... te dio ayuda en su decisión para sí, claro, navegar de mucho. aquí. Sí, 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 claro, sí, mucho. ¿Algo específico que te cae bien de Joe Biden? Oh, pues está apoyando mucho a los inmigrantes. Está dando más que todo el privilegio de estar en un país, de ayudarnos mutuamente. Porque para nosotros los inmigrantes, el, el estar acá, pues, nos hace muy bien. Para, no para nosotros, porque si tú me preguntas por mí, no, pues por mí no, sino por la familia. Porque al trabajar acá, nosotros That's podemos good. ayudar. I a don't even know what he's saying. I just realized the audio only people are getting smoked there. Yeah, speak American. Um, but yeah, basically he's uh, expressing his admiration and how much Joe Biden has encouraged him to come to America. And then what does he talk about immediately after? How it's going to help his whole family. In Nicaragua. So he comes to America to immediately start taking money out of the circulation he sucks here. sucks out cash. <laughs> right to Nicaragua. And sends it back home. Yeah. So America first stuff is bad for Americans, Joe Biden says. And then this Ni guy, Nicaraguan migrants are loving this new Joe Biden mindset and attitude. So yeah. makes Who do you, you believe? Kind of, yeah. Makes you kind of wonder. Uh, let's go to the next disgrace of but, housekeeping. But that's that's I just want to say that's like a hidden super bad thing about the immigration is remittance payments is immediately sending half your paycheck to Mexico, mm -hmm. immediately sending it to Nicaragua. And it's like, OK, you know, it's, usually everybody here gets paid and we stimulate the economy and it goes circular and one dollar turns to 20 here. It's just gone, baby. Sent out. Yep. So our next disgrace, uh, the DeSantis campaign. Let's go over the stats first. There was a stat that came out that says 71% of Trump supporters uh, feel what they... The question is, feel what they tell you is true. And then it gave them some options for Trump supporters. And it said Trump, friends and family, conservative media figures, and religious leaders. So it's basically saying that uh, Trump supporters are saying that they trust Trump more than they trust friends and family and conservative media figures and religious leaders. So 71% say they Trump they trust Trump the most. Yeah, and only 63% for friends and family, so yeah. pretty interesting. DeSantis advisors be like, I think you can take this guy. We should run against this guy. <laughs> yeah. People trust him more than their family. Let's let's take him out. This is our year. Yeah. Don't wait till 2028. I think we got him. Yeah. Yeah, let's not make these people our allies long term and get the DeSantis treatment later. Let's try and challenge this guy in the primary. <laughs> On before he goes people on a revenge like, tour, people basically have a religious experience when he speaks. But, yeah, you know, I, I think we got him. Let's take him out. <laughs> uh, and then there was a DeSantis statement that kind of that came out uh, going against some things that Trump said. And here it is: the dishonest media refuses to report the facts. And then he, you does know a paragraph. what? It's too long. They didn't read it. We're not going to read it. Sorry, Ron. Sorry, Ron. Tight. <laughs> tweet length. Tweet length. Keep shit. it tight, Ron. Five, ten words. I'm not reading all that. Um, all right, let's move on. We also have the Ron DeSantis gritting his teeth weird thing. This is what he does. He's, oh, yeah, he's just like a he's like an autistic guy. I think he's I think he's been taking. Uh, I don't know if I can even say this. It, that looks like a little Ritterol, little Adderall type of, yeah. and with the weight loss too. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's taking his pills. Mm. Well, you got to do what you got to do, I guess. Yeah. Um, so that's another disgrace. Uh, we're moving on. We're into page two of housekeeping. Make sure you guys tickle the post, juice the algorithm, leave your comments. 
Make sure notifications are turned on, like the video, it goes a long way. We got a lot of uh, good algo juicing last week because episode 100, yeah. but let's not forget yeah. to get these algos juiced. Episode 101, just as important as 100, to be honest. Exactly, more important, if anything, because we're still doing it. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on. Everyone's talking about Logan Paul and his new fiance. Um, basically, Logan Paul's got engaged to Nina Agdal. Is that her name? Yeah, Nina Agdal, who was like a it girl supermodel of the early 2000s. Um, Logan Paul has, we're, we're given the abbreviated version here, but Logan Paul has an upcoming fight with Dylan Dennis, and Dylan Dennis has weaponized her promiscuous, whatever you want to call it, past, mm -hmm. uh, just by incessantly posting pictures of her with other men. Noodling, with making every out, guy yeah. getting her ass grabbed. Leo DiCaprio's in there. Everyone made out with her on a boat somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty so much. It's not good. And it's kind of good to bring shame back a little bit, too. Well, that's what I was going to say is shame. It's like we always talk about shame and how, you know, women have no shame and uh, their husbands should do it, their, their father, you know. Mm -hmm. But, uh, then everybody starts shaming one person and it gets, whoa, you're picking on her. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it's good to bring this shame back a little. Uh, she's 31 and she's engaged now, but she had, I don't know, a little too much fun yeah. in her 20s. She get tongued down by everybody. There's photos of it. It's kind of like, it's embarrassing for Logan Paul. Very much. And to be fair, she was also like a model just taking pictures with any guy, really. Mm -hmm. So there is some extra there, mm -hmm. but she was definitely getting, uh, you know, yeah. passed around by the Hollywood kind of guys. Yeah, she was the it girl. Uh, and then Logan Paul also made fun of his Christian co-host a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of like a this yeah. is what you get situation. That's what you get. And and also for the record, I've always thought Logan Paul was cringe and not that funny and not that smart. Mm. But because he's like very rich and famous and has a huge following and successful on social media, you kind of don't like... You can just, you know, you give him the benefit of the doubt, basically. He's got something going for him, he's right? Got he's got something. Smart. He's got some people on his tie. Yeah, he's good at what he does, you know, give him the benefit of the doubt. But now that he's getting engaged to this girl, it's kind of like water seeking its own level and you see where he's at. Mm -hmm. And it's not good. You're marrying a girl who can't say no to men. It's not it's not going to work out for you. Yeah. And then one interesting piece that I thought of, it's like no like Leo DiCaprio. She dated Leo. She goes and dates another guy. Then she goes and get, dates another guy, then another. And nobody cares if uh, she took the appropriate, like, oh, two-month break in between them. Mm -hmm. They just see the numbers start adding up, and they go, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's mm -hmm. on this receipt? Nobody cares if she did it the right way, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's revealing something about the male psyche. Nobody wants a uh, a wife with a ran-through past, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And then Sam Hyde had a great tweet about this. He said, uh, billionaires and celebrities can't get good women. Bezos, Gates, Musk, Logan Paul, pick anyone you've heard of. You, a Best Buy employee, can if you're lucky. If you have a good woman, you are beating most billionaires and celebs at life. Don't forget to value what you have if you're one of the lucky ones. Very true. Which is basically what's going on there. And we've seen, like I've seen these photos of Logan Paul and the girl, and it's like she gives him that fake smile. Mm. Where it's just like more showing teeth, but you can see the lie in her eyes. Like she doesn't actually like him, but she's showing the teeth and doing the smile. But there's something like right in this area where you can tell it's fake. For sure. And you can just see it. The Kanye line comes to mind. One good girl is worth a thousand bitches mm. as well. So true. I don't tend to say bitches like that, but you know, Kanye, he, has, he is poetic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then everyone, you know, who dated her in the past too, it's like everyone kind of had her. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have to engage, get engaged or, you know. No big event on the uh, Italian islands or something. Yeah, or promise like a life of commitment. They kind of just like, hey, you want to go to One Oak? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah. And like that was it. So, you know, set an example, I guess, for young men watching. It's like the goal isn't necessarily to be like Logan Paul. Because he, even though he's rich and famous and has all the stuff he has, there's some stuff that's missing that's actually more important. Um, is there any other stuff on that section that we need to get to? Logan Paul type stuff? Yeah. Not really. You want this this pick? Uh, no. That's what is that? Johnny Root and a trans person? That's yeah, the second week in a row that's been in that's there. That's from last week. Let's well, Where put was that away. where did he even go with that person? I don't know, man. That looks like I don't know, Lake Lake Tahoe. Was he on vacation with them? I don't know. All right, let's just get out of this section completely. We're still in housekeeping. It's a very important housekeeping. We have another page and a half total. COVID lockdowns are potentially coming back. 
Uh, I Alex, keep hearing little murmurs of that, but I haven't actually seen anything substantial. Yeah. What, are you, what did you see? Alex Jones had a TSA whistleblower on who basically said starting mid-September, they're going to make the plane workers wear masks. And mm. then in October, they're going to make everyone wear masks. And then by the winter, they're going to do lo- uh, lockdowns and have COVID stuff coming back because of a new strain that's going around now. Gotcha. So maybe the new strain actually kills people. I don't know. Any TSA wa- show watchers out there? What are you hearing? Yeah. I, it, it doesn't really ring true to me that there's like a month by month plan. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, it it kind of rings true to me. And we've talked about it in the show before. And I've said they could bring it back for the election. So I'm on the I, I, I'm on the team uh, that believes that COVID could come back because they have such a good system, especially for the election with the mail in votes. Man, just as soon as those zero COVID people were trying to get out to like a Barbie movie and stuff, mm-hmm. they thought they thought the end, the light at the end of the tunnel was there. But yeah. And imagine if you believe that COVID was man made and released on purpose, then it makes you think maybe this new strain actually kills people Ooh. and they're going to play the long game. And then like the vaccine people were right. That's what you've always been saying is yeah. they were going to roll out another version that want, now that everybody's guard is down, that actually yeah. kills people. And everyone's going to go, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not locking down. And it's like, mm, this one actually does kill people. All right, let's move on. We have a lot of important things to get to. I just want to get this on the record. It's kind of like a yearly reminder. Monty Python sucks. Mm. I don't like Monty Python. I don't think it's funny. Never thought it was funny. I didn't even watch it. <laughs> it's so bad. Same with Bill Murray. It's just every year we kind of have to remind everybody. Um, all right, moving on. TikTok. You know how China owns TikTok? Yeah. And you know how it's like a predatory social media that's meant to like wire the brains of young Americans in a very bad way? Yeah. And TikTok, it's like a clock. You could almost take it as a threat. Yeah, TikTok America. <laughs> yeah. Time's almost up. We're getting your kids. Yeah. That's kind of what I just realized. I was like, damn, TikTok, that's a threat. That's just, that's China threatening us. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on. You know people deface art and they go to the place and they throw soup on the art mm-hmm. and they try and like make a climate change point and whatever? Of course. I don't think those people are serious because every time they do that, they just throw tomato soup on a painting that probably has a protective film over it yeah of course imagine if you took a cheese grater to the mona lisa and we're just like can't fix that yeah that would actually damage the artwork yeah all right so if you're serious start stabbing and cutting and shredding that's a lot harder to repair and you'll probably make your point a little bit easier does that make sense? A little bit, but I think most of those good ones are behind glass no matter what. So, Well, imagine you boom, boom, boom with like a pocket knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you fix holes? I don't know. I don't Other know. ones you're just cleaning and scraping off layers. How do you how do you fix a shredded picture? Yeah. Um, let's move on to something more important. You know how John- Please, <laughs> so please. My John Fetterman puts- yeah. Are not paying. I know. Everyone thought this was an easy trade. Oh, John Fetterman, he had a stroke and he can't talk. Like, buy puts. But the problem is, I guess it was priced in already. Yeah. He the start- volatility was extremely priced in, yeah. He's starting to look better. He's looking kind of normal back. And now my and, trade's getting away from me. And looking normal versus being able to speak normal, two very different things. But, uh yeah. It's getting away from you. The theta decay. That kills you. The theta decay is killing me. Every day I lose on my John Fetterman puts. All right, let's move on. People with entertaining talents, PETs or pets. I have a new type of comedy that I've really been enjoying online. It's called Bad Stand-Up. It's pretty simple. <laughs> it's, ho- it's called Horrible Stand-Up. It's stand-up comedians who just do a really bad job and do really bad jokes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I found a few that I want to play today. Let's just let the let's let them rip in any order you want. Okay. Do you guys know a legendary wrestler named Andre the Giant? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. um, the, the thing is, you guys, the day he passed away was the day I was born. January 27th, 1993, guys. So do you guys believe in reincarnation? That makes me Andre the Giant, you guys. Where's yeah. the punchline? He forgot to write the joke. He just kept saying, you guys. <laughs> it's Okay, let's do another one. All These right. are like, this Th- is where This it's one's at. my favorite. I just received a text message. My friend said he will bring chimpanzee to my party tomorrow. 
Well, I really hope what he means is champagne. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Of course. <laughs> That's like it looks it look that, that joke in Chinese on paper looks great. <laughs> but right now it's a little tough. Uh, and let's do the last one. I had a friend tell me a couple of weeks ago that I have a drinking problem. I'm like, I don't have a drinking problem. I'm good at drinking. <laughs> Is that him <laughs> laughing at his own shit? <laughs> and then that was it. So I don't know. The, obviously, these jokes aren't funny, but it's almost like an anti-humor. It's almost like an anti-humor humor where mm. it's like, they don't realize it's not funny. They're going into it thinking it's going to be funny. But then the fact that it's so not funny almost makes it funny. Like, I'm laughing when I watch it's it. made the show. <laughs> made the show. Made so, the podcast. I don't know if it's even considered not funny. But in context with everything else at play, it actually is hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty good. Um, that weird Johnny Root picture. I, I'm glad that. I don't know. It keeps coming up on my thing. I have it listed there. What's this Johnny? You put it in your notes. I thought yeah. this was an accident. Well, the first one was, but I just don't get. I just don't get where he was with this person. Doesn't it look like Photoshop. Oh, I don't think you can Photoshop. It's outside. You can't Photoshop. Yeah, that. exactly. Um, all well, right, whatever. Let's move on. Uh, there's a restaurant here in New Orleans that Richard Rapoy and I have gone to. It's called Turkey and the Wolf, hipster spot, hipster doofus place. They have like this fried bologna sandwich. You're supposed to get it. That they're famous for. Like that's yeah. the thing they're famous for. It's like a little bologna sandwich, right? And then they sent an email out to all their customers. And this is what it said. We got this restaurant off the ground with a sort of go with the flow mentality. Not really questioning our reality or considering our blind spots. In retrospect, this was lazy and dangerous. Harm is constantly being committed against black people, indigenous people. Asian Americans, Pacific Islanders, migrants, other people of color, people with disabilities, women, transgender people, queer communities, and others experiencing unique or overlapping systems of oppression. As white, cisgendered, able-bodied restaurant owners, we benefit from these systems of oppression. Understanding our own racism is a matter of life and death. Writing this note is a performance of the bare minimum that really doesn't count for shit in the broader conversation of solidarity. But hopefully it tells you something about our space. If you don't fully align with the pursuit to eradicate patriarchal white supremacy, this ain't the restaurant for you. What the fuck are you talking about? You guys make bologna sandwiches. Make the fucking sandwich. <laughs> are you telling me about all this? Like, who wrote this? One, so, one person who works there? Yeah. Or was it everybody? Is everybody on board with this? It's so performative, too. It's like every buzzword you can in two paragraphs without really saying anything. Yeah, I guess it's like th this, this statement is the bare minimum and it's like and that's all you're going to do. And what does the statement even do? We make fun of it. Yeah, nothing it's not helping at all. Make the fucking bologna sandwiches. And we went there one time and they gave us expired Diet Cokes. The yeah. cans come that they're cans and it was like two months expired and flat flat. Get your fucking house in order before you start saying you have, a, yeah, you have a lot of other things to look out for before you worry about the Pacific Islanders or whatever. <laughs> the Pacific <laughs> Islander population in New Orleans. Yeah. And Classic. Meanwhile, and meanwhile, your your orders are just expired Diet Coke. I guess it's cheaper. So we're going to be prank calling them soon. Mm -hmm. I think that's I mean, that's the least we could do. Yeah, we have to. Um, let's go to the person who was discriminated against. Yeah, let's see. This is probably who they wrote the letter for, basically. I feel like discrimination has gone out of hand. <laughs> I was discriminated against twice tonight in less than two hours. Let me explain while I take off the makeup that I covered myself in to appease the public eye um, to get hired at jobs that I really don't even want. Um, That's just good. something. So she takes off her makeup and she has tattoos all over her face. And she says, I had to put the makeup on for a job I didn't even want. But then you got discriminated against because you didn't get hired for the job you didn't want. Mm -hmm. So you have a bad attitude. You're covered in stupid tattoos. You, 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 you tattooed your eyeballs. Your eyes are black. And you don't even want the job. I'm sure that energy was re received. <laughs> and then you didn't get hired and now it's discrimination. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. My favorite part is someone, there's someone in this person's life, the mother, 
who's just been like, no, every step of the way, you can't, you're never going to get a job with that. She's like an old <laughs> Italian mom or something. No, not, no, that's enough, Stacy, whatever her actual name yeah. is. And every step along the way, she said, no, mom, you don't get it. You're too old. You don't get it. And now she can't even get hired at Denny's. I can't imagine these jobs were very high end either. Yeah, exactly. Probably customer facing. And it's like, eh, I have a business. I don't want you facing my customers. Let's get a teenager in here. Yeah. <laughs> like a, a nice looking regular teenager. And I'll have to hire a new one in two years when he goes off to college. But that's better than this. Yeah. Go work for Turkey and the Wolf. Yeah. They'll, they'll hire Get you. in there. They have to. They have to. <laughs> You're discriminated against as a woman. Um, all right, Disney. Um, Disney has a new model for one of their Darth Vader costumes that's kind of problematic. I guess D- Turkey and the Wolf would agree with us on that. Of course. Uh, we have a kid in a Darth Vader outfit doing a Hitler salute, and I guess he's also disabled, which is just on the side. So Not, that that's that, neutral. That's penalties offset. Yeah. Replay first down, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hitler salute plus this. I think it's doing a force. He's doing the force. He's choking, but mm, you hopefully. Know. Comes off a little Hitlery. All right, moving on. Last thing of housekeeping: Oliver Anthony he got offered eight million bucks and he turned it down. Oliver Anthony, you gotta take the eight million. You gotta take the eight mil, bro. <laughs> Even I know it, that's yeah. contrarian, and we probably like you more for turning it down, but you gotta take the eight mil, right? He said nothing special about me. He should. Well, they probably would have made him do like a tour and give him a bus and make him go all over the country and suck his soul. Of course, of course. But it's eight mil. For, so. You do it for a year and then you take the eight mil. Mm, debatable. Yeah. Um, all right. That is the end of housekeeping. Nice express housekeeping. It was three pages. Uh, before we get into Cringe of the Week, make sure you guys join FleckusTalks.com where you will find bonus lands every Friday. And we did an interview with John Doyle last week, which was very fun. That was really insightful. Uh, we're doing another Q&A. We're filming another Q&A this week for Bonus Land. So make sure you guys join Bonus Land at FluxTalks.com. Uh, and then also, while I have you, uh, we have our merch shirt, our new um, podcast merch shirt. Uh, it is available on FluxTalks.com. Here's the design. Looks really cool. Uh, it's been going off the shelf, so make sure you get it before we're all sold out. Subtle, not loud, you know, discreet podcast shirt. Discreet, very cool podcast shirt, Miami Vice vibes. All right, cringe of the week. Our first clip of cringe, the dead cat uh, fake baby thing. Charlie's my dead cat. She's inside of Owen right now. I want to take her outside of Owen and put her in the new baby I made yesterday. Uh, Charlie leaked. You know what I'm going to say? Paddy wagon? Paddy wagon. You know what I'm going to say? (laughs) You know what I'm going to (laughs) say? What? Trans in a month. Ooh, she's got a month. Why, how hasn't she gotten trans yet? She'll be trans in a month. Fake baby cat ashes. This is if leaking a man, too. If a man was doing this, we'd say serial killer. If a girl, we, I guess we say trans in a month. I don't you gotta know. Gotta be rocking on the, on the padded floor somewhere. Crazy. Uh, that's like a final form cat lady. When all the cats die, what happens? And you're a cat lady. Ashes you, you, in a fake baby. You put the ashes in a fake baby, and then so she's walking around leaking cat ashes. Yeah, that's good. She said it was leaking. (laughs) Um, All right, let's move on. There's a new gay species discovered. This men in black one? Yeah. So he's very tall and slender. And he likes being tall. He likes being tall. He's committed to the bit, it's called. Taking pictures. It's kind of like in Men in Black where they go to that underground facility where all the aliens are working like side by side with humans. Yeah. And there's like all different kinds, like the huge fat ones, the one with 10 heads, and then there's like the tall skinny one. Yeah. It's kind of like a men in black situation, which I like. I like characters. Okay. All right. So that could be a pet. Didn't expect that. A ringing endorsement just yeah. because it reminded you of a movie. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> well, it's fun to see diversity. Okay. That kind of diversity. Yeah. Like seven foot tall twink. You like freaks. Freaks. Okay. Got a way to put it. All right, let's go on to the lesbians who moved to a safe neighborhood and they're complaining about it. Of course. 
In May, my partner and I moved cross country from Austin to the Denver area, and we accidentally ended up in a super conservative neighborhood. Our neighborhood is filled with American flags and military flags and a whole lot of white men driving trucks, and it doesn't feel particularly safe for us as women of color who are lesbians. But we still wanted to show our pride, so rather than putting our pride flag outside where someone could damage it or steal it, we decided to hang it up inside in a front window, which looked like this. Everything was good and well in June, but then in July, we received a warning from our HOA. And the notice was confusingly written, like they couldn't quite figure out which rule or regulation applied in this situation. It first said that we can't have a flag as a window covering, and if we want to fly a flag, it has to be outside on a flagpole. It then said that all holiday decorations must be taken down within one week of their respective holiday, implying that our pride flag can only be flown in the month of June. Because you know, we're only gay in June. Basically, it's some bullshit. And if I owned this house, you can bet I would fire up my law degree and I would fight back. No. Well, you rent. You rent. You don't. First of all, the trans flag is an eyesore. The, every color that there is in blocky geometric shapes. No, it's an yeah. ugly flag. It's, like It's an ugly flag, even, aesthetically not pleasing. I think even gay and trans people might admit that. Yeah. It's an ugly, blocky, useless flag. And it also means that you're pro-child genital mutilation. So that's kind of the bed you made, 99. Tuck and yourself in. I love how she says, uh, you know, we accidentally moved to a conservative neighborhood. We thought it was all great. Like, I'm sure the crime was low. The neighborhood and house was nice. The streets were kept nice. There's good schools. She doesn't even know, like, what attracted her to that neighborhood is, like, the qualities that these type of people, it like, attribute. You know, exactly. They, they just do it. And it's like, hmm, is this neighborhood a sum of its parts? No, it's just a good neighborhood, and, and yeah. it got taken over by these white guys and trucks. Exactly. So it's like clearly the neighborhood was good because it's a conservative neighborhood. And then you say, I don't feel safe because there's all white military guys with trucks and American flags. That's like the safest place in America. That's literally the safest place. <laughs> I, I don't I don't even get it, what she's complaining about. And they also said you can fly the flag outside. Mm -hmm. Just don't put it in your window. You can fly it outside. So it's not like uh, an issue with the flag. It's just you can't we don't do window coverings with flags in this neighborhood. Yeah, we have standards. Well, and then also it's like a house in an HOA suburbia. And then you're putting up a flag on the just anywhere like you're in a frat house, like with a barstool flag, you yeah. know, like, oh, but we're gay. So and there's there's also a piece of this where they're doing it just to stir the shit. Mm -hmm. They're doing it to stir the pot. Um, I like I'm going to keep this flag up in defiance. It's like, why? Mm -hmm. Why do you care? Everybody knows you're gay already. Nobody's coming over with a, a jello mold. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed too with the progressives and like the LGBTs is whenever they call out like the patriarchy and like white supremacy or whatever, and then we saw it with Turkey and the Wolf too. It's like even if you're on the left, if you're a white person, you still benefit from the white supremacy patriarchal society. So it's like even if you're against it, it's still benefiting you. So like you're still part of the problem. And then I saw this meme about uh, groomers, and it kind of made sense where the little pig bubble thing says, all libs are groomers. And then what does the guy say? Uh, this little fish blobfish says, all libs are groomers. And the guy says, excuse me? Not all libs. Some libs are good people. And then the blobfish goes, even so. They still participate in an inherently corrupt system that targets vulnerable children. But that doesn't mean all libs are groomers. Which is the same, it's like using their mindset their and their gay tactic. little explaining way yeah, yeah. against them. So it's like, oh, not all, you know, not all trans people are groomers, but you still operate in a system where trans people can groom and you're, you're again, you're for it. Yeah, so exactly. That's kind of how I see that playing out. Um, moving on. But yeah, I, I mean, I just want to go back before we move on. These people assume these good neighborhoods are just like a popping. You see this a lot popping out of nowhere in a vacuum. Oh, that's a good neighborhood. And whoever was there, that would be a good neighborhood because someone built it up that way. And it's like, no, that's not the case at all. Like every single thing is a sum of its parts. And sure, you can have a couple of bad eggs in that neighborhood that still don't affect it. But once you reach that tipping point of like everyone's a, a rat and like 40% of the thing, they don't care about their lawn. They don't care about this. And all of a sudden, property values start to creep down a little bit. And mm -hmm. uh Everybody with a brain and everybody who has like a uh, self-interest in their own neighborhood knows that. And that's why neighborhoods don't like renters, you know, mm -hmm. neighborhoods don't like Airbnbs. Nobody has a tie to the neighborhood. Nobody has like a stake in it. 
Yeah. Um, and so it's something you're going to see more and more as single family rentals and stuff like that. You know, the big corporations who are kind of buying up houses in bulk and then renting them like the rents might go down because the neighborhood, nobody's going to fucking care. Broken yeah. down minivan in the driveway, all that type exactly. of shit. We accidentally moved into a conservative neighborhood. That's why it was nice. That's why you chose it. <laughs> you got attracted to the qualities of that neighborhood and you go, huh? The qualities of that neighborhood were conservative? Could have been anything. Better put up my ugly fucking flag in my main window. And be the one person who doesn't fit in. Yeah. All right. Good luck. Um, let's move on. Adult kindergarten. That's yeah. That's something. That's new. This clip came from a place in Scotland, and it's called the Big Kid Kindergarten. Play so with, with blocks. Yeah, blocks and Legos. You're oh, drawing. Watercolors. Big swing. Nap time. Nap time. Arts and crafts. Get get out the pipe cleaners. Pizza party. And they build blocks, and these are all adults. This this will get ruined by a pedophile soon. Yeah, somebody's going to show up with a diaper and really take it seriously. <laughs> and shit in the diaper and go, Mah. I made a mess. And then he thinks the teacher, is, who's really <laughs> just like a babysitter, is going to change it. Yeah. And like a lot of people who do these like adult kindergarten things, they have like childhood trauma, and they're trying to heal their inner child. Like that's like the that's energy. like what the website says. Yeah. It's like come like we need we forgot how to play. Come learn how to do it again. And it's like if you have childhood trauma, instead of like harping on it and trying to like relive it and like reverse it, I think all you have to do is have your own kids and then give them what you needed or make sure they don't have the bad thing that happened to the, you happened to them. Yeah, exactly. Like that's do, how you fix the you break the generational curse and then you. You enjoy the fruits of that labor. You know, exactly. you have a loving family, right? You exactly. create it. Exactly. And that's what they don't do. So what do you think? Who who goes to this? Like, what type of person? Uh, like, obviously, like you said. Like the, a Disney an individual. Yeah. It's the same umbrella. Mm. Adult babies, um, arrested development, uh, perpetual adolescence. People who are stuck in nostalgia and that's all they care about. It's, yeah. It's fascinating to me because obviously I would never go to this. I would never be caught dead. And yet there is a market. Yeah. It's for people who think they're too smart to have kids um, because of like how bad the world is and having a kid in a white patriarchal society and all this stuff and climate change. Yeah. It's for like those types of retards. If I was a criminal slash pickpocket slash whatever – I would just hang out outside this and I'd wait for everybody to come out. I think they wouldn't put up a fight at all. You don't even need a weapon. You just go, hey, yeah, you just give me, give me your shit. Give me your shit. <laughs> you, you, give me your phone. Give yeah. me your phone. <laughs> Let's go to the other one. There's another kind of version. This energy is like my least favorite thing in the world. If I was there, I would leave. Oh my God. It's a rainbow portal. Let's go. We're alive. <laughs> These are all adults here. It's not, it's, for kids, I'd be fine. These are all adults. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Judo World. Come in, come in. Now, before you go off. That's good. Wow, brightly colored plywood and iPads built in. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. To, to be fair, I, I think this might be like a press day or something. This is more for kids. But the fact that this is full of adults, I think it might be like a press day. But fingers crossed. I, I'm sure there's going to be some adults who go, yeah, let's go. This is cool. This is wacky. Um, all right. Well, let's move on. Adult babies. Not for me. Not good. Not good. Quebec has fallen. This is the Quebec... Uh, Weather Channel. Uh, Ce n'est pas bon temps. Il y a un homosexual. <laughs> Did you Google Translate? <laughs> You've been to Google Translate recently. Je parle un petit peu de français. Yeah. Um, and then on the screen behind that uh, drag queen, it says defiled. On the TV, it's like a French word, death feel, the whatever, but it says defiled, and that's kind of like the Illuminati. They show you what they're doing. So it's like, oh, the drag queen's talking about tip. whatever. Defiled behind them. Duh. Um, let's move on. Okay. Let's go to the kid who's doing the Holy Mass playing. Yeah, this kid is doing, uh, he's in the full full outfit and he's got he looks like he's doing some communion type and stuff he's doing like a his version of like a holy mass yeah and then this guy tweets about it says i don't find photos of little boys dressing up like priests playing holy mass cute 
I can just imagine the wacko mom that sewed his little vestments because she is so sure he has a vocation. But it was his idea. Stop. Teach him why it's not like blah, blah, blah. And then someone replies to that going, why isn't he cross-dressing or acting like a twink like normal kids? <laughs> Yeah, that's the problem. Whenever it's religion, they need to, they have to make a correction. This isn't right. This isn't natural. But if the kid says, I'm a girl, it's time to take him to the doctor for a 200K surgery. Which is a religion, you know? The, yeah. the left, it's basically become the de facto religion with these very strict belief systems. They just get updated more. Those yeah. belief systems just get up, updated and re-downloaded to, like, new standards every, like, six months. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it might as well be a religion with the way the strict adherence is required. You yeah, know? it definitely is a religion. Let's go on to the military clip. This clip's kind of going viral, and these people aren't very important military people, but uh, it's ugly. Yeah, so this guy's going around asking everyone, why did you join the army? How did you join the army? Why did you join the army? I don't know. For money. Huh? For money. Why did you join the army? Free food. <laughs> Why did you join the army, Battle? Um, why, why, why? I joined because my dad asked me to join. Okay, I love it. Why did you join the army, Battle? So I could get a reason and get pregnant and get the age. <laughs> Why did you join the army? I joined the army because I wanted to better myself and Free food, I get to sleep anywhere Thank you. Better, why did you join the army? I don't know. I don't know why I joined the army. <laughs> Great. How do you you get the army? point? Everyone's a fucking average idiot. Everyone's an average idiot and a girl. And we kind of talked about this on Bonus Land, I think maybe two weeks ago, but I no longer just default respect the troops. You have to kind of make it to the special forces or mm, something. Yeah. You kind of got to make it to SOCOM or... Some other level. Yeah. I, the grunts, the paper pushers, the, you know, the admin types. I'm not giving up that first class seat on the plane for any <laughs> of you guys. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly. And then you have to wonder, World War Three, China and Russia versus us. You know, I like to think we would win every war we go against whoever because we're so strong. And Air the superiority. So Technology, all the stuff, we the got, budget. We still have Lockheed Martin. We got Raytheon. All the best shit comes from there. So we're still, there's a little bit of a moat. Yeah, we're still up there and things are still good. But keep in mind, and I'm convinced of this, I think we have people at the highest levels in our government and our military that actually don't want what's best for us and they want us to lose. Mm. So it's like we have all the stuff, but also in like the globalist agenda and like the future planning of the world, America would lose that top dog spot. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I know historically we're the best. I know we have all the money and all the weapons and stuff. But when you have all like the trans people in the military, mm. it's like, I don't know. I think there's an agenda to make us not the world's military power anymore, not the leader in the world anymore. And I think that's kind of coming soon. And then you see stuff like this and it's like, yeah, no one's proud to be in the military and our military doesn't look very prepared. Another interesting thing that's kind of been coming out recently is there's been Chinese spies in our military, just like uh, a guy who was ethnically Chinese and his mom was, he was born in America, but he was from China. His family was from China sending messages back. And it's like, who could have seen this coming? Yeah. It's like, I don't know. He's pretty strongly Chinese. Like, <laughs> what? I don't, I don't know. Bring him in a room. Who's the spy? It's and, like, uh... And then anecdotally, I heard uh, there was some, it might have been like a Reddit post or a, a long tweet thread, but basically a guy was uh, telling a story about how some lecturer came to some division of the army or something like that and was describing ways to find spies or people who might be selling secrets and like, here's what to look for. And then the guy raised his hand and was like, so what about just Chinese people? <laughs> and he was like, oh, we can't say that. But it's like, that's who would do it. So, yeah. it, and, oh, this guy's this guy's got family ties to Russia. It's like, well, yeah, they'll, they'll look suspicious. They'll do this. And it's like, they're teaching you everything except the instinctual thing, which is, oh yeah, you know America's biggest adversaries? They might be from there. Yeah. The guy speaking broken English? The, it, it, from Zhengzhou? Yeah. The second generation <laughs> immigrant from Shangguang? <laughs> Who's the, who could be the Chinese spy? It's yeah. like, uh, oh, no. Rachel. Could be me. Could yeah. be any of us. Could be any one of us equally. Well, that's the end of Cringe of the Week. We have an extensive Urban Decay. 
So let's get into Urban Decay. Uh, first one is the clip of the teachers talking about how they don't correct young students who are black who say ax instead of ask. I saw this in my time in the public school system. Uh, when a uh, black or African-American child says to their teacher, teacher, can I ask you a question? And the immediate response being from the teacher uh, with a sense of superiority based in uh, white racial superiority, often with our 84% white female teachers, uh, the response being, that's not how we say ask. We say ask. Ask isn't a word. So no more correcting that. It's the, it's the correct English language thing. It's, you're not saying ask. You're saying a different English word. The correct word is ask. But because I guess the teacher's not black, they can't correct the student. Yeah. Maybe they should get like a black sock puppet. Yeah. And go, oh, it's actually ask, not ax. <laughs> as long as it's someone telling themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then she goes with an air of superiority or righteousness. And it's like, no, yeah, yeah. That's real. That's not an air of superiority. That's just the right way to do it. Yeah. There's or, no correct way to say it here. Yeah. Yes, there is. Yeah. <laughs> it's spelled. And, and it's like, it's one thing if you say, if the English teacher comes out and goes, well, you know, some sort of African American communities do tend to say ax. And if you do that at home, you know, nobody's going to bat an eye, but I wouldn't ax anything in a interview with a Fortune 500 company. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't ax anything, you know, for when you're talking about chopping wood. Mm -hmm. That might get confusing. That's a who's on first situation really yeah. quick. So, yeah, it, it's just dumb. And then everybody, all the bobbleheads go, mm -hmm. they know where she's going. Uh -huh. She's an ally. Yeah, dude. You yeah. can't teach correct English anymore because there's too many white women teachers. I don't know. And yeah, you can't teach correct English anymore because young black students know English incorrectly too much. Mm -hmm. and we don't want to correct them. So it's like basically you have no standards. Well, the, and uh, no standards, but then also there was a tipping point. You had to fight this battle 10 years ago. Yeah. Now it's too late. It's just Axe. Yep. So Axe is going to continue. Let's go on to the kids with the toy guns. I like these guys. These kids say Axe. Yeah. He said, Mo fucking hoes. Let me hit that weed, bro. It's a crayon. So people often ask the question, there's like a sign. N-word, hoes, wife beaters, guns, smoking weed. Yeah. They hit like everything, everything in the culture, right? This is what happens when you have bad cousins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let them say acts, though. Yeah. Uh, but at least they're doing fun hey, shit. dad's just outside the door. If he catches them doing this. <laughs> Exactly. They're, they're done for. At least they're doing fun shit. At least they're not nerds reading books and... Yeah, no science fair bullshit, right? Harry Potter bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, Those kids it, never amount to anything. And then there's like a there's like a meme that goes around. Um, basically, there was like a, a, a kid and his mom, like a black kid and his mom, and, and the kid's like 10 years old, and the sign said, when do I go from cute to scary? <laughs> and then somebody commented, around 12. Yeah. So it's like you go to you go to scary pretty quick when you're doing shit like this. And then there was also that kid a couple weeks ago who six year old. Six year old shot and killed his teacher and she didn't said, die. She didn't die. Oh, didn't die. Shot the teacher and he said, I shot that bitch dead. So then you go you go to scary pretty quick yeah. when you're a child with a gun and yeah. no parents. Yeah, yeah, that twelve year old uh, scary threshold, it's off when you have access to a firearm. <laughs> and bad cousins. Yeah. And yeah, bad parents. Let's move on to the teachers meeting about racism. This is why that DEI piece, the diversity, equity, inclusion piece becomes much more substantial because the reason why our students have always been failing is because of structural racism yeah. and because we don't have a lot of money compared to the amount of money that we should be allocated. So um, maybe we need to be more explicit about that, that white supremacy is um, very alive and well in our schools. Yeah, um, so white supremacy is the reason all the black kids are failing in school. It's white supremacy. In reality, it's because they don't have anyone at home they're afraid of. Yeah, and, you know, I, I'd say in reality, too, it's like some of them have a lower IQ. They don't have that dog in them. And to in order to get a passing, like, to your grade level, you'd have to put in a lot of hours. Yeah. And then at home, you maybe need a tutor for a certain subject. 
but that's not really getting addressed at home. Yeah, no one's trying to get anything out of them at home. Yeah. That's the big issue, I think, especially if you're at a young age. You have to, like, my sister has kids. They're always doing something. They're always drawing. They're uh, reading. They're what building. Should a kid, what should a kid's reading comprehension be at this age level? Okay, where's my daughter's? Okay, she's above it. We're good. Yeah. Let's keep going. We'll keep reading nighttime stories. Exactly. It's all the same stuff. Constantly like, doing stuff. Constantly explaining stuff. Constantly building stuff. Constantly reading stuff. My sister is not on her phone eating hot Cheetos. Yeah. Playing on her phone. And then, you know, if I'm a school administrator and uh, I'm, it didn't show it on camera, but I'm sure everybody in the crowd was going, mm -hmm. as soon as she said white supremacy, they're nodding. It's a very easy excuse. Why does everybody fail? Not enough money and too much white supremacy. It's done. I don't have to explain myself. I, I'm I'm good for another 10 years. I'm good until retirement. Yeah, exactly. So all these kids, they they have no one at home challenging them. And then you keep getting pushed through every grade because you can't leave a kid behind anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's like you didn't learn what you needed to learn from kindergarten to eighth grade. Now you're going to high school and you haven't learned anything. And it's like, what, you're going to learn algebra? Yeah. You have no shot. Like you don't have it in you because you didn't get prepared up until that point. So that's why the system fails. But instead of doing anything about it, they just blame it on the white folks. Yeah. Constantly comparing, you know, where your child is at a development compared to the average child mm -hmm. uh, at that same age range. That's white supremacy, y'all. Yeah, that, exactly. Like, you can't have standards. Uh, everybody's cool. Everybody's good. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the teacher who says the N-word. Trying to teach this kid a lesson. Here we go. I'm a fucking nigga. You want me to say that? Damn it, the fuck? Nobody uses that word. Yes, they do. Nobody you, says nigga. You can say it. You acting like you don't fuck we're having you a conversation. conversation. You can say the word, but I can't. You can't say, say nigga or no. fucking nigga. Calling somebody. The whores are not your fucking race because you're my fucking teacher. Don't say that shit. If, if, we're, if we're in a class and I'm teaching you, hey, the word nigger is an old. The fuck you say that shit? That's good. You think this teacher has some like racial hatred in his heart and that just escaped right there? That's what they would play it as. They probably fired him for this. Of course. <laughs> but like but, this teacher is genuinely trying to put him on something. Yeah. He's trying to teach him something. And you see it. He says it the second time and he goes. Argh! And the teacher says, you can't have a word make you react like that. You're not going to get through life if that's how you act. And the girl. Which is the, the exact right thing. And that's like a good teacher. That's a good teacher. Hard lesson. Good teacher. He's going to tell you something that the Internet is not going to tell you. If you let a word have power over over you like this, you're, what are you going to do? And you get violent from a word. You're going to punch a cop. Yeah, like, exactly. What, what's the next thing, you know? And if like a white person had a negative reaction to a word and got violent, they would say, oh, that's white fragility. <laughs> yeah, exa well, exactly. So and then you see the girl with the trans thing on her computer. <laughs> she's out there going like this, like, oh, as if she's so smart and the teacher doesn't get it. Yeah. Everybody, everybody in the class knows the rules. You can't ever say that no, no word. Yeah. And if you do, someone's allowed to break stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. like what happened? When did we get there? That's a third world. That's third world shit. Yeah. Um, let's go on to the Asian lady who gets knocked out. This is a very disturbing clip. Basically, this lady gets pushed off the bus and knocked out. And then everyone just stands around as an NPC, doesn't know how to operate. And then in like two minutes, a, a, a black person comes and robs her. So... She gets knocked out. No one helps her. And then another person comes. So there she goes. She gets pushed off the bus. Knocked out. Crazy guy. Someone comes in and helps her. That's good. Yeah. and But this, not even. Like, you should hold that guy down until the cops get there. Yeah, this guy has the wrong idea. You don't just push the street rat and let them get away. So then, old Asian lady. She's knocked out. Everyone's trying to get off the bus still. She's just asleep on the ground. And then we can fast forward a little bit. Everyone's just looking at her. No Nobody's really attending to her. No one's helping. Except, oh, here comes street rat number two. And here comes street rat number two. He's looking at her. Some guy says, get away. You don't look like a doctor. <laughs> the bus driver says, get away. And he goes, nah, I'm going to take her wallet. And then he takes her wallet. So we have more criminals than good Samaritans, basically. And you know what? I don't know what to say. Like, open your eyes. 
that's going to be the reality in some of these cases. There's more criminals or people looking for an opportunity than there are good Samaritans. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're living in one of these types of areas, maybe, I don't know, consider relocating. Consider going to somewhere where you you have an honest guess that there are more good Samaritans. Yeah. Move to a, accidentally move to a conservative neighborhood. And maybe in Denver. You might have one <laughs> you might have one mad lesbian couple, but everybody else will pretty much look out for you. Exactly. Even, they'll they'll pull up in their big mean diesel truck, but then they'll <laughs> help you. They'll stabilize your neck and they'll call help. Yeah, exactly. Uh in Chicago, they're uh, Stop Asian hate though, right? I wish they would. I wish they would. But it, and you know what? I'm not going to even comment on the color of everybody's skin, but that's who's doing the Asian hate. That's who's doing the Asian hate. And uh, we should tell Turkey and the wolf, too. Yeah. Ooh. We should call them and say, hey, Asian hate, that's a problem. Who's doing it? Yeah. Who's <laughs> doing it? Just, who should hey, we look out for? A bologna sandwich, please. And then uh, one more thing. Who's doing the Asian hate? <laughs> I've never seen anybody else. <laughs> who should I be? Who should I be worried about? Yeah. Who's the suspect? Uh, in Chicago, there was a headline: Chicago Democrats ask gang members to refrain from shootouts between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Yeah, so we're at the point where we're we're negotiating with the cartel. <laughs> um, their Democratic city is is being asked to limit the uh, shooting their guns in the streets to nighttime. Democrat Alderwoman Maria Haddon asked gang members to refrain. Uh, to reduce the risk to people, quote, not involved in high risk activities. Um, so, yeah, apparently if you're out in Chicago after 9 p.m., you're just asking for it. <laughs> yeah. You're asking for a bullet to the neck. Leave the shooting to nighttime, please. Yeah. Yeah. Hope that works. Hope that works. So let's go on to our last clip of Urban Decay, the 911 call for the crazy cat. These people. What about this one? Oh, you can play that. Yeah, let that one rip. This is, uh, you know, this is the mom who's out of the picture of the little kids with the guns. Yeah, the yeah. Let's see what she's up to. If your daddy ain't shit, clap your hands. Why are you not clapping? Your daddy ain't shit either. Good. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's lovely. That's good. If your daddy ain't shit, swearing at your kids, and then turning your kids against the father. Yeah. yeah, denigrating the father. And you know what? To be fair. The daddy might not be shit. This daddy might not be shit. <laughs> Both of those baby daddies might not be shit. But go fucking tell your girlfriends about it. Yeah. Don't complain to your stupid other baby daddy having moms. You don't need to poison the kids, all right? Tell the kids that dad's on a boat somewhere doing research in Antarctica. Yeah. And that's why he comes around once a year. Yeah. And then when your kid's old enough, you tell him the truth. And then he goes, uh, I kind of always knew that, but... Thank you for not just talking shit about my dad. Mm -hmm. But this is what happens a lot too. The uh, the mothers, they they have a child with a baby daddy, and then they hate that guy, and then the son looks just like him, mm -hmm. and then there's a little bit of resentment happening. There's a little bit of fuck you. Like you know? the mom stuck with the kid, which is like the looks exactly like Detravion, and then Detravion left the kid behind. Yeah. So it's like, oh, this is just mini Detravion. I hate Detravion, and by hating Detravion, you automatically at least a little bit hate the kid. Yeah, the vibes aren't good in the house at a minimum. Bad right? vibes. Um, so. Let's move on to the nine one one call. These people had a cat go crazy in their house, uh, and they this had is, to call the cops. And this is the white section of Urban Decay, yeah. as you'll be able to tell. Yeah, hi. I have a kind of a particular emergency here. Um, my cat attacked our seven-month-old child, and I kicked the button, the cat in the rear, and it has went off over the edge, and we um, aren't safe around the cat. It's a very large Himalayan, and we're trapped in our bedroom. He won't let us out of our door. Okay. Attention? No, no, he's just got scratches on his forehead. But the cat, we don't know what to do about the cat. He's gone, oh, he's trying to attack us. He's very, 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 very hostile. So I tried to get a hold of animal control. Hang on just a second. You guys are inside your bedroom right now. Yeah, yeah. And if I, when I leave. So they're in their bedroom stuck. This is the type of people that vote for criminals to be released and the guns to get taken away. Yep. The people can't fight back mm -hmm. against the cat. And you call the cops because you can't get. The cat calm down. You can't kill a cat. You can't beat up the cat. You can't just trick the cat to get it locked into another room. The only, you're going to call the cops who go, hmm, what do I have on my utility belt? A taser, a baton, and a gun. <laughs> Which one am I going to treat the cat with? Yeah, so the, his wife got the ick after that. I'm, I'm going to say. When this, you have to call the cops, call another man to come kill a cat because yeah, you this, can't do it. This is kind of equivalent to the Nina Agdahl, Logan Paul thing. This is mm. the other side yeah. where your husband needs to 
call someone in to deal with a 22 pound Himalayan. Yeah, so that's that. Well, that's the end of Urban Decay. Another Urban Decay in the books. Don't get too down. There's a common get... theme in that Urban Decay, though. Yeah, and it's, the you know, school. bad parent, bad schools, full of excuses, no responsibility, and then you wonder where all the criminals come from. <laughs> I don't, I don't fucking know what happened, but. <laughs> What's this pipeline? Yeah, this is crazy. Everyone talks about the, the the pipeline to jail as if that's the problem. There's another pipeline to criminality that yeah. no one's really talking about. Exactly. Um, let's move on to uplifting gold. Don't get too down. Don't get too depressed. We are moving on to uplifting gold. Um, first is the the shopper who gets hogtied. Someone tried to rob a store, and then some country boys came in and hogtied him up. Yep. Try that in a small town. I love it. I love it. That's what you get. There's you. You're a doppelganger there. Yep. Yeah, and these guys, they hog tie him up, and it's like, nobody cares. Scream all you want. Oh, they're white, and he's Mexican. It's like, no, he stole. No, he stole. He's tied up now. Here's a guy in the truck. We actually don't need to look at race. (laughs) This makes for a nice neighborhood that lesbians would want to move to. Yep, accidentally. Uh, Let's move on to the dog who follows the rules. This is very interesting. So the farmer just came here and told me a little bit more about border collies I didn't know. If you watch, the one in the back doesn't pay attention to my stick, watching the movement. Go that way. If you look, I'm not even worried about the stick, just watching the movement. And I guess this is the older one, and that's the young one. When this one ends up passing away, that will be the leader, and the pup will do the same thing that that one's doing. Never watches the stick. Always goes out the lead. See it? Border collie lesson. Isn't that cool? Good girl. Uh, the dog's got a little system. I like dogs with jobs. Me too. Let's go. And let's, speaking of, let's go to the next dog with a job. When your golden retriever Are you for real right retrieves now? a live duck from the park. <laughs> <laughs> he just went out and got Violet, it. Violet, drop the duck. Drop it. The duck's okay. Yeah. Soft jaw. Dog with a job in a past life. And that kind of makes me sad because Golden Retriever became the most popular, like, suburban random dog ever. Mm-hmm. And so many of them don't have the chance to retrieve. Yeah, You that's know true. what I mean? Yeah, it's sad. R.I.P. Let's move on to the mom who does the fake falls at the airport. I like bits like this. This is a good commitment to the bit. Let's see. My mom thinks it's funny to fake trip next to people at the airport. <laughs> For the bit. That's just, good shit. Just to make your kids laugh and be embarrassing. That's really good stuff. All right, let's go to our last clip of Uplifting Gold, the Elaine dancing contest. Obviously, Fleckus is a huge Seinfeld watcher. I watch it every night. The Elaine dancing contest. that good that's culture baby guys in here get the guy out all right you get the gist yeah pretty good yeah well that's the end of the episode what'd you think good episode it was a good episode yeah yeah all not right. my favorite not my least favorite but we made some good points and we had some great clips we did. that's all you can do it's episode 101 zoe 101 baby they can't all be one out of you know, 100. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes they have to be just normal good episodes, which we liked. Okay. But if Fleckus talks to the books, thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. FleckusMerch.com for that cool new t-shirt. FleckusTalks.com for bonus land, Q&As, interview with John Doyle, and more. We're working on live stream capabilities, too, so we're going to be able to do some live streams in the future. Make sure you guys join FleckusTalks.com. First month is free. Everything is linked in the description. Thank you for watching. We'll see you at the next one. What he means is champagne. <laughs> <laughs>